So let's not waste any time. Let's just go dive in deep and get into the situation. So as most of you are aware, this kind of came out a bit left field for me. It really did come out a bit left field. I swear to God, I wasn't really paying attention to it. But I guess randomly, Paddy had flipping, what's his name? Um, Dana White on his podcast. And I guess for some reason, they ended up talking about um, Ariel Hawani. And I never knew there was an issue between Paddy and Ariel. I know Ariel does have a tendency to wind up fighters. With his kind of line of questioning, he does seem to be somebody who tries to get the most out of his interviews and comes at it from a journalistic almost wwe um top type of way right he's kind of bantering and probing and pressing and stuff but i never really feel like it's always i never feel like it's disrespectful i never feel like he's trying to cross the line or trying to instigate things i just feel like he's trying to be a good journalist and kind of generate clicks and headlines and stories but it's never really crossed the line for me maybe old ariel i feel like this version of ariel is a little bit more conscious about not pressing people's buttons especially since he's gone through that issue with dana but for the most part, I always feel like he has issues with Dana, but I never feel like he has issues with fighters. Maybe there's some who don't like him, but for the most part, his issues, I feel like, always come from people who want to toe the line, who are very much in Dana's pocket, maybe managers, maybe coaches, maybe some fighters, but I never really would assume he'd be an enemy of the fighters because I feel like he advocates for them a lot. He's somebody that's really balls deep in MMA and UFC in general. He's obviously somebody that kind of keeps an eye on other um other divisions sorry other um, other organizations in terms of seeing people that you know prospects that can maybe come over to the ufc and champion them and all that kind of good stuff so this came out of left field i was like why is paddy got such a real um you know itch in his pants about flipping ariel he really seems to dislike the guy and i couldn't really figure out why but this is a clip taken from his podcast where he's sitting down with dana white and he's basically going over some of his grievances and to be honest after watching the video there's two clips to come up i still can't really figure out what his actual issue with ariel is but we're going to play the video anyway and you can see what he had to say regarding ariel hawani and kind of why he maybe dislikes him i hate all these journalists especially the ones what earn off us you know what i mean like ariel hawani in particular like he loves earning money off fighters yeah. like every decent job he's had he's being sacked from <laughs> you know what i mean like and now he's just a, a biased content creator. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And he hates on you, hates on the UFC, he even hates on me now. Yeah. And it proper annoys me huh. because he uses fighters for clicks. Use you can hear Dana in the background literally coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Dana's fucking so happy. <laughs> uses fighters to make money and then tries to have the audacity to talk about the UFC and yourself saying that they don't pay the fighters enough. Get your dough out, Ariel. You know what I mean? Start paying people for these interviews What you make thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on. And that, I know that now because I make money off YouTube. So I know how much he earns off YouTube, off all his interviews, what he does. And you're doing it for exposure. No, you're not. You're doing it to put money in your pocket, Ariel. You little rodent. <laughs> Lads. Woo! I just sat back and let that go. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. He's a... Have you ever seen Dana White smile and laugh like that in the company of a fighter? Unless obviously they're on a hot win streak and they knock people out and stuff. When's the last time you've seen Dana White legitimately smile to that level? He legitimately hates Ariel with every fiber in his flipping being to his pit of his stomach, to the taint of his... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He hates that guy for real, for real. What an amazing, crazy and wacky and wild organization to be a part of where the main figurehead has a real boner for you well not a boner but a real um grievance with you right to the point where they're willing to trash you on podcasts in front of other fighters on the roster and they want to really disturb your ability to earn money must be mad massive sack of <laughs> is what he is exactly he's but... the biggest piece of, oh. of all time and i couldn't have said it better he wanted, like, when I was in New York for the MSG card last, last year, he wanted me to do an interview with him. And I had a paid interview that day, and he wanted me to really let go of that paid interview to do an interview with him right. for BT Sport, what he's getting paid for. And he said, oh, no, that's me journalist integrity. You're not a journalist no more. Far from it. You, Far you're from a, it. You're a content creator, Ariel. You're not a journalist. Stop lying. You're very biased in what you do and what you say. So true. And he went on his MMA hour and talked about me and my manager. And then I ended up messaging him. They're going to have to bleep this out. But my first line was, you're a cheeky c you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 
he didn't like it. But I was just me being honest. You right. know what I mean? He was talking about me saying that uh, I can't believe fighters and managers have got the audacity to ask me for money. Why wouldn't we? You're a content creator. And if I'm wait, who the f are you? <laughs> who the f are you? This dude's ego is. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? Oh, whatever. My Irish accent's horrible, isn't it? Who the fuck is that? Yeah, I can't do it. Anyway, let's continue. So f massive, and he thinks he's whatever. You know what the great thing is about him? He's completely f disappeared. So since ESPN let him go, I, I, I don't even see nothing even pops up. I hear nothing about him. I see nothing about him. It, it, I, I literally don't even know that guy exists unless somebody brings him up to me. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, and you're exactly right. The he's way, a piece of... Yeah, he is. He's a maggot. Yeah. And the worst <laughs> thing about him is he goes, in all his interviews, ah, God, he pisses me off, you know. He goes, I haven't got a horse in this race. Yeah, you have. It's called putting money in your yeah. pocket. You're you know the I mean? horse in this You're the horse race. in this exactly. race. And he acts like he's fighter's friend. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when I messaged them about that that time, he was like, Paddy, the other week when your Instagram got disabled, I was the one sharing it for you. I was like, yeah, to suck me ass yeah. so that the next time you ask for an interview, I'd do it for you. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, it, it pisses me off that he pretends to be people's friends when he's not. He, he's a lizard. He's one of the slimiest... Whoa. scummiest mother that you will ever come across yeah I can't wait for this to get clipped out and go onto Instagram you know I can't yeah. wait he's Swear. a slimy scummy little mother little piece of shit. he really is Bad. he really is I made up I brought that this up the best on. podcast I've ever been on <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, um, the reaction from Dana was swift. Paddy definitely seemed to have a bug to bear about flipping uh, Ariel Hawani, which doesn't make real much sense to me. And I left it feeling a little bit like, damn, man, what the hell is going on with Ariel? Why did he seem to elicit such strong reactions and feelings from these fighters? Like, what the hell is going on that kind of does this to people? So the first thing, obviously, that I mentioned, that I kind of saw that kind of, you know, was a bit strange, was clearly Dana was excited and happy to trash um, Ariel. He didn't really waste any time to go in there and sort of insult him and obviously say all that crazy stuff about him which is grossly unprofessional you'd imagine but hey that's how Dana rolls he does his own thing and you know kind of leads the way he wants to lead and then when it comes to Paddy he seemed to be really pissed off about Ariel and not really I didn't really know how to articulate why he doesn't like him and I wonder if that's just like a gut feeling Paddy has with Ariel where I don't think everyone's meant to get along and be kumbaya. I do think sometimes, you know, as great as Ariel is as a journalist, I maybe could understand why some people maybe don't like him as a personality, right? I understand maybe how he comes across, maybe how he looks or something, whatever it may be. Or maybe just sometimes people just look at you and just think, you know what, I don't like the cut of your jib. And that can happen quite often. I know it's happened to me prior because I sometimes have an outsized personality. I can sometimes be a little bit exhausting when I step into the room and I'm on full energy. I can definitely get that. And sometimes just some people just aren't gonna like you and this might be a one of those kind of occasions where paddy can't articulate why he doesn't like ariel but he just has a gut feeling that he doesn't necessarily trust him in some way shape or form he doesn't know how to articulate it and obviously now because of that little pass that they had with the interview that's the one thing he's sort of holding on to so it's not really a reason but it's just like a feeling he has like i shouldn't like this guy he looks like a worm he looks like a maggot whatever he's saying jeremy you know I there's maybe something to that in terms of all this sort of a uh, vibe in it i find the uh, criticism of the money earning on youtube with paddy goes on his show a bit weird because any even though even though Ariel isn't earning any money from his youtube channel because if i'm not mistaken the youtube channel that he works under is essentially a network it's like him being on hbo or espn or showtime he just is a salaried employee so he just gets paid i guess monthly i guess in the states you get paid monthly like we do here in the uk right if you're working a full-time job not sure if you get paid twice in a month or usually you get paid once in a month for whatever salary you're on so he might be a high earning salary guy but he's still just a guy that works in the office shop but he does the con he does instead of working in the office just writing he's obviously doing media in terms of content online and whatnot but all that money has been generated from that youtube account that adsense is not going to him but even if it was going to him what is the issue i don't understand it especially paddy's doing the same thing and also i think to myself like if you're paddy and you're a trained professional fighter and you're employed to break people's faces to twist their limbs and to punch and kick them hit them with your elbows and strangle them to flip and sleep the last thing you should be worrying about is setting up a youtube channel or going and trying to organize payment for a flipping platform to go and do an interview if anything you should be trying to grab as many places as possible to jump on to do free interviews as possible to get promo and then 
then turning off and going back to training you shouldn't be thinking anything more it should be plug and play you should be thinking about setting up cameras about where to angle stuff about editing about titles about thumbnails you should just be using whatever media is out there especially free just to kind of get your name out there and to make sure that your card or, or your pay-per-view is bought whatever it may be or it's something it's got a high ticket gate thing whatever the term is uh, so i don't necessarily get all that regard in, in that regard in that way and then the other thing which i thought was really weird was what paddy was saying about ariel and he should maybe oh if he feels like the fighters are not getting paid enough and you know ariel has been really advocating a lot for a very very long time about fair pay in the ufc and obviously it's something that he really feels passionate about and even fans like myself from the outside in i'm like a casual but even i feel really passionate about it and i feel like it's really disgusting how shitty um the pay is there at the ufc i think one of paddy's last fights i'm not mistaken he got 12 and 12 so imagine he's risking his life going in that octagon i know it's a bit hyperbolic to say but essentially you're putting your life on the line to go fight another man in underwear in an octagon and you're using your legs elbows knees and flipping you know arms and whatever it may be to flipping beat up and strangle people and you got 12 on 12 which essentially means you got 12 to show up so if you're not injured you get 12 and you got 12 to win and obviously you got a bonus for the fight for the finish 50,000 but still after you account for your flights your camp your your eating regime or diet whatever else coaching you got on top of it and living costs you know what was it like 70 odd grand isn't that much money to be honest especially a fighter of his sort of caliber and with his sort of appeal and pool obviously he has other ways of making money he's obviously got this deal with barstool sports which is obviously amazing him and meatball are on there doing great things but him saying that ariel should pony up the money it feels like it feels like the same sort of thing that rio ferdinand said to newcastle fans when they were really agitated and pissed off about mike ashley's ownership of newcastle or they were, he was dragging them into the doldrums he wasn't really reinvesting into the club and you know Newcastle being a flipping football city they're really passionate about their club and they wanted it to kind of be restored to former glories and he clearly wasn't in the place financially or didn't want to um, invest any of his own money to any sort of extensive return and obviously the fans there completely hated him to the point where they essentially drove him to sell probably sooner than he probably would have liked to and everybody resoundingly public pressure was like yeah Mike Ashley's a terrible owner for Newcastle but I remember Rio Ferdinand because I guess he was friends with Mike Ashley or maybe he, I think he, if I'm not mistaken he does business with Mike Ashley because he owned at that time Sports Direct which I think was stocking his brand five or whatnot he said something along the lines of oh if the Newcastle fans don't like Mike Ashley they should just buy the club themselves which is absolutely insane to say because Newcastle if you don't know is one of the poorest cities in the UK the unemployment rate is super low um, it's super high sorry and you clearly these people go and watch football to kind of unwind and unplug from their daily lives but it's not a place where people have the money and the means to buy Mike Ashley out and buy the club for themselves and have it be fan owned because they would have done it already if they wanted to so the fact that someone like Rio in his position to come out and say buy the club yourself was really disingenuous and really disrespectful and it feels like the same sort of thing that Paddy's doing playing up to Dana because it's in front of him and say why don't you offer us more? why don't you pay us more money it's like no you should be bringing that smoke to Dana Dana's the one that should be offering you guys more money because essentially I feel like this whole interview was essentially kind of a cry for help because if you strip it all back it looks like Paddy's manager has come in and essentially told Paddy because Paddy's been on an absolute media tear right since he's come into the UFC he does all sorts of media all sorts of media and I think the manager told him hey man you're doing too much you're spreading yourself too thin you're everywhere and you need to be charging some of these people and obviously with Paddy because he's earning so little now because he's such a new fighter he hasn't necessarily fought anybody that amazing just yet um, but even though he's still got a big pull he probably seeing it as like oh yeah every interview that I'm doing is an opportunity to earn money so now that manager's got into his ear and convinced him that he's in interviews are an earning potential because he doesn't earn enough money base salary from the UFC and I feel like if the UFC were way better at kind of just paying their fighters a fair base salary I don't know what a fair base salary is I know at the moment they don't pay you anything I think even if you're active you might get paid some money I think I forgot what it was but for the most part you get paid to fight so essentially you're like an independent contractor you're not really employed and you know Dana White famously said you know the UFC isn't a job or something it's a it's an opportunity which is absolutely insane to say because it's the only opportunity in town right the other leagues exist but they don't really matter for the most part the UFC is the big leagues so the fact that they're not a allowing you to earn a fair amount to to cover your basic needs is insane and i feel like that's the reason why these fighters are doing this shit you're not earning and then even if you are fighting your earning potential is only whatever you can draw how much of an appeal you are who you're beating if you're on a winning streak and obviously if you lose that kind of affects your ability to play to fight more and you get injured or blah 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 so i feel like in the end all of this is like a cry for help because they're not exactly getting paid enough and if they just paid them a base salary there wouldn't be a need to try and 
you know, um, scrimp and kind of pull money from interviews because you're not, you, you know, because how much is, if, like, let's try and figure out how much would Ariel be trying to charge anyway, or a journalist, anyone, um, a media person, if you've got a platform and let's say you've got like a hundred thousand subscribers or whatnot, you get decent views and videos. Well, how much are you meant to pay a fighter for an interview? A hundred dollars, 200, 500, 600, a thousand. Either way, it's not really, you wouldn't imagine enough money to really move the needle. It's just money that you obviously would add to whatever else you're earning outside of it and also how many interviews can you do in a calendar year if you're not really fighting if you're not active anyway so you kind of have to be active to get the interviews but then if you're active you kind of have to focus on your flipping fight and your fight camp i'd imagine for the most part so it's a little bit counterintuitive that's why i feel like th those guys at that top level even just it doesn't matter the whole of the ufc roster your basically sole purpose on this earth is to go into the octagon and fight mixed martial arts style right incredibly difficult to do at the highest level against some of the best talent in the world you should be focusing on fighting you should be focusing on becoming a media star i feel like everyone's doing this now because they just need to make money it's just a sad indictment of ufc at the moment like everyone has to basically try to be the next connor outside of the octagon just to make some money to live whereas i feel like if they paid everybody a base salary nothing crazy it could even just be one grand five thousand whatever just something that can cover your nut so that for the most part it would allow you then to focus on your fighting and not have to focus on all that media stuff you definitely see a lot more different fighters the fighters will be way more different in terms of how they present themselves i think all this rah-rah drama stuff the fighters do is mostly because they know they kind of have to create something a narrative controversy whatever it may be just to kind of get some extra eyes on them that maybe would attract eyes of brands and sponsors it's a really sad indictment of what the UFC currently is where they've sort of turned everybody into a quasi social media influencer or content creator just because they don't pay enough as a base salary it's really really disappointing to be honest and I also feel like it's sad too the fighters should always be on the journalist side because I feel like once the dust settles regardless of who you got beef with regardless of somebody gave you maybe a really scathing review of your fight or criticized your intentions or your prospects whatever it may be at the end of the day the journalists are more on the side of the fighters than they are of the UFC. The UFC has done more scummy things to fighters than the journalists have. Yes, journalists sometimes have stoked the fires of fights and maybe, you know, um, disregarded certain people's, um, you know, potential in terms of winning the belts or winning certain cards or winning certain fights, sorry, whatever it may be, or maybe underestimate somebody. But I think for the long, for the for the bigger picture sort of thing, fight journalists are more so on the side of fighters than they are of the UFC. And we've seen history has kind of showed us many examples of the usc always fucking over fighters eventually doesn't matter how high up you are what kind of run you're on what you've done for the sport eventually the ufc will come and kick you in the ass so the fact that they he's kind of siding with the ufc at this moment when he's kind of the darling is a little bit disappointing because you know it's going to turn sooner rather than later and i also felt like this is another example as why having a union is impossible in the ufc fighters union is impossible a fighters union is impossible because clearly what you're seeing is that there's such division within the fighters in terms of how they view themselves within how they view the ufc within their place in the organization that it's impossible to get them to all agree to kind of collectively come together and unionize and sort of demand more from the ufc collectively it's not going to happen because some people get paid well some people get paid you know allegedly under the table some people carry the favor of certain um pick for certain fight pickers or whatever they're called i've got the term that they, they refer them to and certain people don't really mind the current arrangement that they're in like you know i didn't see paddy pick a I didn't see Paddy kick up much of a fuss when he mentioned he's 20, I think he's 12 and 12. I think maybe whoever asked, I forgot when it was. There was an interview, I remember some, whoever whoever was, he was talking to maybe had a bit more of a shocked face, but he didn't really, really seem to mind. He just kind of took it in his stride. Like, yeah, I'm on 12 and 12 now. If I, to paraphrase, he said something like, oh, I'm on 12 and 12 now. Maybe in the future, once I fight more and I do more, you know, I can get more. That's just how the business is. He didn't really seem that concerned by it. So clearly, maybe because he's earning more money outside of the UFC with these brand deals and sponsorships, that maybe helps. But they it's clearly a real division and a real kind of conflicting of opinions when it comes to what necessarily the, the UFC is doing right or wrong by the fighters so the whole union thing is never going to happen to end it also on the paddy side of things ultimately skill level wise in terms of his ability to be a contender for the belt in order for him to be you know a real kind of menace within the top 10 rankings of his weight class 
he's not really at that level I don't feel like skill wise so far from what we've seen just from a you know casual point of view to really be on this sort of tip anyway far better fighters and far more you know experienced and illustrious fighters from beforehand have been treated far worse than him so for him to think that just because he's currently the flavor of the month that it's not going to happen to him and he's also not going to eventually get kicked in the ass by the UFC is really really short-sighted I feel like personally and I feel like he's going to end up regretting um you know essentially uh, trying to cozy up and get friendly and you know essentially kind of bred um, Dana to this extent because it always ends in tears he's smiling and laughing in your face now but it, all it takes is a couple of drastic and horrendous losses and then suddenly your phone you know he's not picking up your phone calls anymore the DMs are going to get left on red and stuff it happens to every single person so I don't necessarily see how he feels like he's any different in this regard so it's really disappointing to see that in my opinion going forward with that kind of malarkey but you know what do I know when it comes to this sort of stuff